concept of graph theory. A graph consists of a finite set of points called vertices. The singular of vertices is vertex. And line segments are curves called edges connecting the points. Here's an example of a graph in figure 14-1. Uh, you have the points. The points are A, B, C, and D. Those points are the vertices of the graph. And you have the edges. Uh, edge BC, that's an edge. Uh, CD is an edge. Uh, your line segments connecting your points, those are your edges in your graph. AD is an edge. Uh, AB is an edge. Uh, there's a line segment connecting uh, BD. That's an edge. There's a line segment connecting AC. That's an edge. And this is what we call a loop. This is a line segment connecting uh, C to itself. So this would be, be considered a uh, line segment CC. And once again, it's a loop. It's uh, connecting uh, vertex C to itself. Now this point here is not a vertex. This is not a vertex. You don't have a point there. So once again, your vertices here are A, B, C, and D. Graphs can be used to picture real-world situations. For example, here is a set of islands connected by bridges. We have Alfalfa Key Island, we have Canary Island, we have Blackbeard Key Island, and we have Duck Island. And they are connected by these bridges. So we want to represent this by using a graph, by using points and line segments. Once again, the points of vertices, the line segments are, are called edges. Now what we do in this case, uh, since uh, uh, we have different letters at the beginning of each one of the names of the islands, we can use those letters to represent our points. So we can use point A, point B, point C, and point D for our points. So we put a point at each one of these on our paper instead of these uh, islands. We just have points. We would have a point for this island, a point for that island, a point for this island, and a point for that island. So we should have a total of one, two, three, four points on our paper. And then the bridges are the edges. We connect A to B. That would be one of our edges. We connect uh, C to A, and we connect uh, C to B. We connect uh, B to D, we connect C to D, and we connect A to D, and that would be our graph. And that's what we have done here on the left in figure 14-3. Uh, we try to pretty much uh, put the points in the position that they're located in in the figure. So we have the A, B here, we have the C just about in the middle there, then we have D down the bottom. And then we just put the bridges in there, A is connected to B, and these are just real bridges. We have a specific definition for a bridge uh, in graph theory, but we're not using that definition now. We're just talking about a real physical bridge that connects one island to the other. Uh, so that would, those would be your edges, uh, uh, the connections between the islands. So there's a connection between A and B. There's a connection between A and C. Connection between C and B. 
Uh, there's a bridge between C and D, so we have a connection there. There's a bridge between B and D, so we have a line segment or an edge connecting that. And there's a connection between A and D. So this is the graph of that real life uh, physical situation. We have points, which are the vertices of the graph, and we have edges, uh, which are the line segments. So you have some problems uh, like this at the end of the section. You have to take real world situations and make uh, graphs for those real world situations. Uh, we can also uh, make graphs of house plans. Here's an example of a house plan. Uh, we want to make a graph for this house plan. And once again, at the end of this section, you will have some problems uh, that you will have to do. There will be some house plans at the end of this section, and you will have to make a graph for the house plan. So you look at the house plan, you see we have the outside of the house. Uh, we have the living room, we have the dining room, we have the kitchen, and we have the bathroom. Now, if you look at the first word uh, uh, for each one of these entities that we have here, you would notice that the first letter of the first word, uh, all of those first letters are different. So we can just use the first letter of the first word of each one of these as the points. We can use O as a point for the outside. We put a point there. Uh, we would use a point for the living room. L. A point for D for the dining room. A point for K for the kitchen. A point for B for the bathroom. So we would have one, two, three, four, five points which represent the vertices of our graph. And then, after we put those five points on our paper, then we just connect the rooms that are connected. Uh, as you notice here, the living room is connected to the outside. You can go through this door and get to the outside. So you should have a line segment between O and L. It should be a line segment between those two points. Uh, the living room is connected to the dining room. So there should be a line segment between point L and point D. Uh, also, the kitchen is connected to the dining room. So there should be a line segment from L to K. Uh, the dining room is connected to the kitchen. So there should be a line segment from D to K. The dining room is connected to the bathroom, so there should be a line segment from D to B. And the kitchen is connected to the outside, so there should be a line segment from K to O. There should be a line segment from K to O. And if you look at figure 14-16, you'll see that that's what we have. We have a point for the bathroom, a point. Excuse me. A point for the dining room, a point or a vertex for the kitchen, we have a point for the living room, a point for the uh, outside, and as we said, the living room is connected to the outside through this door here, living room is connected to the outside. Uh, the living room is connected to the kitchen. There's a door from the living room, from the living room to the kitchen. There's a door. Uh, the outside is connected to the kitchen. There's a door from the kitchen to the outside. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the dining room is connected to the living room. There's a door here from the dining room to the living room. Uh, the dining room is connected to the kitchen. There's a door from the dining room to the kitchen. And the dining room is connected to the bathroom. There's a door from the dining room to the bathroom. So this is the graph of that real world situation. This is the graph of that house plan. And once again, you have some house plans to graph. 
at the end of the section. You will also have some maps to graph at the end of the section. And this is an example of a map. Uh, these different uh, <coughs> entities here represent counties uh, in central Pennsylvania. You have Forest County, Vernango County, uh, Clarion County, Jefferson County, and Elk County. And we want to do a graph for this real world situation. So we start out by, by <coughs> letting our counties be points. And then if there's a direct border between them, we draw an edge between the points. So as you can see here, each county, the name of each county, uh, begins with a different letter of the alphabet. So we can just use the first letter of each one of these as our points or vertices. So we have a point V, a point F, a point C, point J, and point uh, E. So we pretty much try to put the points the way these things are located uh, in, in relationship with one another. Um, and then we make the connections. Uh, Clarion C is directly uh, connected to V, so we're going to draw a line from a line segment from point V to point C. Uh, there's a direct connection between C and F, so we draw a line between a line segment between C and F. Uh, between uh, C and J, there's a direct connection. So that takes care of C as far as the direct connections are concerned. And then we uh, look at V and we, we know that V is uh, connected to F. Uh, so we already have that line segment. If we don't, we draw that line segment. And that's pretty much it for uh, V. We already have V connected to C. So then we go to forest, we know it's connected to V and connected to C. F is directly connected to J, so we draw a line segment from F to J, point F to point J. F is directly uh, connected to E, so we draw a line segment from point F to point E. And then we go to E. We already did E and F, so we do E is di directly uh, connected to Jefferson. And that's pretty much it for E. Then we check Jefferson out, and we've already taken care of Jefferson. So that's pretty much it. And if you look look in the lower right hand left hand corner here, uh, you'll see uh, what we have here. We have uh, V, F, E, C, and J. So we try to pretty much put these. Uh, in the same location on the map uh, as far as their relative location to each other. Uh, you know, it's not perfect, but we try to put it uh, similar to what we have in the actual map. And then we make our connections, as we said. There's a connection between uh, V and F, connection between uh, V and C, connection between F and C between F and J, between F and E, between E and J, uh, and between C and J. And this is the graph of that uh, physical situation, physical real world situation. Equivalent graphs. Definition of equivalent graphs. When two graphs have the same vertices connected in the same way relative to each other, we call them equivalent. So this is the definition of equivalent graphs. You have the exact same vertices connected in the same way to one another. Now, <clears throat> if you look at these two graphs, you see that they are equivalent. They have the exact same vertices, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. A is connected to B, A is connected to B. 
A is connected to C. A is connected to C. B is connected to C. B is connected to C. A is connected to D. A is connected to D. B is connected to D. B is connected to D. So as you can see, they have the exact same vertices and they are connected to one another in the exact same way. So that's how you recognize uh, equivalent graphs. Check the vertices out first. See if they have the exact same vertices. Then look at the relationships between the vertices <coughs> and see if they're the same. Okay, the next thing is the definition of the degree of a vertex and what we mean by even and odd vertices. The degree of a vertex is the number of edges that intersect that vertex. For example, if we look at this vertex here, you have one edge intersecting it from the right, one edge intersecting it from the left, making a total of two, two edges intersecting that, that vertex. So the degree of that vertex is two because you have two edges intersecting that vertex. And this brings us to what we mean by even and odd vertex. If a vertex has an even number of edges intersecting it, then it's what we call an even vertex. If a vertex has an odd number of edges intersecting it, it's what we call an odd vertex. So this would be an even vertex here because you have two edges intersecting that vertex. This would be an example of an odd vertex. There's only one vertex intersecting that, there's only one edge intersecting that vertex. So of course one is an odd number. So this would be considered an odd vertex. If you look at this vertex here, we have one, two, three three edges intersecting that vertex. So of course three is an odd number so this would be considered an odd vertex. Uh, this vertex here has one, two, three, four. There are four edges intersecting that vertex. So this vertex, the degree is four and it would be considered an even vertex. If you look at this vertex, it has one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six edges intersecting that vertex. The degree is six. Since six is an even number, this is an even vertex. The last vertex, we have one, two, three, four, five. Five edges intersecting that vertex. The degree is five. Five is an odd number, so this is an odd vertex. The next thing is the definition of adjacent vertices. Two vertices are adjacent if there's an edge between them. For example, if we look at this graph here, between A and B, there's an edge. So A and B are considered adjacent vertices. Uh, between A and E there's an edge. So A and E would be considered adjacent vertices. Now if you look at E and D there's no edge between E and D. So E and D are not adjacent vertices. For adjacent vertices uh, there has to be an edge between the two vertices. So that's what we mean by adjacent vertices. Now, the next thing is the definition of what we mean by a path. A path on a graph is a sequence of adjacent vertices and the edges connecting them that uses no edge more than once. Once again, 
and stop the tape if you need to. If you need to stop the tape to write down this definition, then do so. That's the beautiful part about having a video tape lesson. You can stop the tape at any time. You can play it back over and over again as many times as you need to. Once again, as indicated, a path on a graph is a sequence of adjacent vertices. So the vertices have to be adjacent. They have to be an edge between the vertices. And the edges connecting them that uses no edge more than once. You can't go over an edge more than once. For example, if we look at this figure here, there's a path. If I go from A to B, B to C, C to D, that represents a path because I have adjacent vertices and I did not go over any uh, edge more than once. So that would be an example of a path. Another example of a path, B to A, A to E, that would be a path. B to A, A to E, that would be an example of a path. I have adjacent vertices and I did not go over any edge twice to get from the beginning of the path to the end of the path. So you can have uh, a lot of different uh, paths in a graph. Those are not the only two. We can have many other paths. I can have a path that goes from E to F, I mean from F to E, E to C, and then C to B, C to D. That would be another path. Uh, I can have a path that goes from A to B, B to C, C to E, and then E to A. That would be another path because I did, didn't retrace my steps. Now, I could not have a path that does this. I could not have a path that goes from F to E, E to A, A to E, and then E to C. I cannot, that, that would not be a path because I, I went over this edge twice. You see, if I go from F to E, E to A, A to E, I'm going over this path twice, over this edge twice. So that would not be a path. A path, you can only go over an edge once. Now, and also for a path, you can start virtually anywhere. I, I started here, I can start here at A and go around in this fashion and end up at E and that would be a path. I can start at F and end up at uh, D and that would be considered a path. Now the next thing that we want to talk about is a circuit. Now a circuit is a path that ends at the place that it began. In other words, the beginning and the e ending are the same when you have a circuit. You cannot uh, go over any edge twice. Just like with the path. Uh, but uh, additionally, you must end up where you started. You must end up when you start it. So a circuit. So an example of a circuit, if I go from A to B, B to C, C to E, and E to A, that would be an example of a circuit. I ended up where I started. Now that's not the only example of a circuit in this uh, graph. I could start I could start at point C and go from C to E E to A, A to B, and then B to C. That would be a different circuit. That would be considered a different circuit because I started at a different point, but I ended up at that same point. So it would be considered a circuit. So once again, you can see the difference between a circuit and a path. A path 
you don't have to end up at the point that you started. But for a circuit, you have to end up at the point that you started. Okay, the next thing is the definition of what we mean by a connected graph in a disconnected graph. A graph is said to be connected if for any two vertices there is at least one path that connects them. For any two vertices there is at least one path that connects them. So uh, for example, here, uh, there's a path that connects uh, F to C. Uh, there's a path that connects uh, E to D. You see, for F to C, I can say uh, F to E and then E to C. There's a path that connects all of these different points in this graph. For example, if I, if I want to go from uh, A to D, there's a path that connects those two. I can go from A to B, B to C, and then from C to D. You see, that's the path that connects those two vertices, that connects those two points. So this would be an example of a connected uh, graph. This would be an example of a connected graph. Now, if you can't get a connection. Then of course if you can't find a path that will connect uh, all the points then the graph would be considered disconnected. So basically for a disconnected graph you really have two separate parts of the graph and there's no path to get from one part of the graph to the other. So let's look at the examples that we have on the next page. All these graphs here are connected. Uh, you can get from any other point to any other point. Uh, there's a path that you can use to get from one point to the other. These graphs here are disconnected. If you look at these graphs here, you have two separate parts of the graph. There's no way I can get, there's no path to take me from C to B. There's no path to take me from C to A. You see, this is just one graph, but it is disconnected because I can't get from C to B. There's no path that would take me there. The same thing here. This is one graph. It's disconnected because I can't, there's no path to take me to A. Uh, here, as you can see, this is one graph. But you have two separate parts, and there's no path to take you from one part to the other. So these are examples of disconnected uh, graphs. Now this shows you what we mean by a bridge. Definition of a bridge. A bridge is an edge that if you take it out of the graph, the graph will be a disconnected graph. That's the definition of a bridge. B R I D G E. When you when you're dealing with graphs, this is not the bridge we were talking about a few minutes ago. The bridge we were talking about a few minutes ago was a real bridge, like Berkeley Bridge or the Jordan Bridge or the James River Bridge. But now this is a technical definition in graph theory. A bridge is an edge that if you take it out the graph would be a disconnected graph. You see, this edge here is a bridge. If I take this edge out, I will not be able to get to point A. There will be no path to get to point A if I take, take this edge out. So this edge here is a bridge. If I take this edge out here, there will, there, there will be no path to get to E. So I would have a disconnected graph. So once again, these are considered bridges. Now, here's an example similar to some of the homework problems that you would have. You have this graph, as you can see. You, you have your vertices, you have your line segments, uh, you have your loop here. So this is a, an example of a graph, and this is what you have to do. 
A. You have to list the odd vertices. B. You have to list the even vertices. C. What vertex has a loop? D. Are there any bridges? And E. Identify at least one circuit. Remember a circuit, you can't uh, retrace any edges. You cannot retrace any edges and you must end up where you be where you began. You must end up where you began. Uh, now we want to list the odd vertices. So you have to look at each vertex and decide how many edges intersect that vertex. If that number of edges is an odd number, you have an odd vertex. If the number of edges that intersect that vertex is an even number, then you have an even vertex. Let's look at vertex T. Vertex T has one, two edges that intersect it. Two is an even number, so this would be an even vertex. Vertex U, you have to check out each vertex. Vertex U has one, two. It has two edges that intersect it. Two is an even number. Vertex U will be an even vertex. Vertex V has one, two, three. It has three edges that are intersecting it. Therefore, since 3 is an odd number, it would be considered an odd vertex. Vertex Y has 1, 2, 3, 4. It has 4 vertices intersecting it. 4 is an even number. Vertex Y would be considered an even vertex. Vertex Z has only 1 edge that intersects it. 1 is an odd number, therefore vertex Z is an odd vertex. Vertex X has 1, 2, 3. It has 3 edges that intersect it. 3 is an odd number, therefore vertex X would be an odd vertex. Now vertex W. Vertex W has 1, 2. You see a loop is considered an edge. So vertex W really has two edges that intersect it. So vertex W is an even vertex. And I, I, I think that you can see that vertex W is a, uh, has a loop. Vertex W has a loop. Are there any bridges? Bridges? Remember, a bridge is a part that if you take it out, you will have a disconnected graph. So are there any bridges? Do you see any edges that if you take that edge out, there will be a disconnected graph? Do you see any edges like that? I see one right here. If I take this edge out, there will be no way to get to point Z if I take that edge out. So therefore, YZ is a bridge. YZ is a bridge. Also, if I take out WY, there will be no way to get to point Y. So WY is also a bridge. So the question is, are there any bridges? The answer is yes. The last part, you have to identify at least one circuit. So you have to end up where you start. You cannot retrace an edge. So here's an example of a circuit. If I start at point T, go from T to U, U to V, V to X, and then back to T. That would be an example of a circuit. I ended up where I started and I didn't retrace any edges. 
So there are other examples of circuits in this figure also. So uh, you might look at the figure and might find a different one. But as long as you, you end up where you started and you didn't retrace, retrace any of your edges, it would be considered a circuit. All right, the next thing is graph coloring. Uh, for graph coloring, you should think about a map. If you have a map, you don't want uh, states, for example, uh, uh, that, that are side by side, they have the same color. Because if that's the case, you won't be able to tell where one state begins and the other one ends. So you want to make sure that you don't have states that are side by side the same color. So that's what this coloring uh, system is about. And you really have to use trial and error uh, to make your decisions as far as coloring is concerned. Uh, and you can use any colors that you want to. The colors are totally up to you unless otherwise stated in the problem. As long as you use different colors. Okay. Uh, a coloring for a graph is a method <coughs> of coloring all the vertices so that any pair of vertices joined by an edge have different colors. The smallest number of colors that can be used for coloring a graph is called the chromatic number. So you want to find the chromatic number. You want to find the smallest number of colors that you can use on the graph. That's what you want to find. And once again, you have to <coughs> use trial and error to do that. And here's an example. Uh, we have uh, this uh, graph here. And we want to figure out the chromatic number, the smallest number of colors that we can use in this graph uh, so that we don't have uh, vertices that are adjacent or side by side with the same color. And here's the process that we use. Uh, the colored graph is shown in figure 14-24. So this is the graph, and this is how we get this graph. We begin by coloring vertex F blue. So the choice of blue is totally arbitrary. Unless otherwise stated, you can use any color that you want to. Uh, so we color F blue. Then B and S can't be blue because they're connected to F, and they have to be different from each other because they're connected to each other. We chose red and green. So those are the colors we chose uh, for B and S. Uh, we chose red for B and green for S. Now, vertex U can be colored blue. You see, we can use blue again now because uh, vertex U, U is not connected to vertex F. So you want to reuse a color if you can. Uh, which then requires H to be colored green. You see? So we can use the color that we had before. We don't have to put in a new color. Because H is not connected to S. So we can use green there. Next, root vertex W is connected to B, red, and H, green. So it has to be blue. You see, we can reuse blue. We don't have to introduce a new color. So, so that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to not introduce a new color unless absolutely necessary. Finally, vertex E can be either red or green. It doesn't matter which one. In any case, we have discovered that the graph can be colored with three colors, uh, but no less. So its chromatic number is three. And that's how we figure out what the chromatic number is for, for a graph. 
and at least three different meeting times are required. So this was a graph involving meeting times, but in any type of graph you use that same type of analysis to figure out the chromatic number. And that can be applied to maps. Uh, once you figure out your uh, colors for your graph, then you can look at your graph and see what O represented. O represent Oregon, so, so you color it with this color. Uh, w represents Washington, so you color it with this color. Uh, uh, I represents Idaho, you color it with this color. So you just color it with the colors that you have on your graph. Okay, uh, for homework on this section, homework on 14-1, uh, 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 page uh, 844, you want to do problems 13 through 24, number 25, number 27, number 31, number 38, and number 39. Those are the problems that you have to do. Now, if your professor has given you other problems, you want to do those problems. Uh, if you're just uh, viewing this tape for self-enrichment, then uh, you can find some problems online, or you can get a textbook uh, that covers uh, graph theory, and you can do some problems uh, from that textbook. This concludes this lecture. Bye now.